What's up guys? Today is Monday, November 21st, and today I have planned a Q&A. I've not done one for about a year. I think the last time I did one was in last December during Vlogmas. So, which by the way, I'm not going to do this year because making that many videos every single night is stressful to me. And I know some people love to do that and love to edit every single night, but I just have too much going on right now to where that's not going to be a thing. But I'm definitely going to continue vlogging weekly for you all. So, I posted a picture on Instagram that announced that I was going to do a Q&A about three days ago. And I've gotten, I think, like a hundred different people asking questions. So, I'm going to try to get through as many as I can. And they're all very good questions that I can literally talk on for like ages. So I'm going to try and keep it short for you all. So here we go. What are good ways to get motivated to go back to the gym after competition? I competed in April and haven't stepped foot in the gym since August. Love you. This is from Rookie Bikini Competitor. And I actually met her in Chicago when... I did junior nationals so this girl is very sweet and um, I definitely feel for you about the competing and the gym time because when you compete you kind of beat yourself down so hard to where by the end of prep you most likely are just going to the gym to get it done you go in there you don't really want to talk to anyone you just basically go in there to get the job done and then go about your day because most of us are going you know two times a day sometimes three times a day and uh, that can really burn someone out so my suggestion to you is to if you're feeling that burnout kind of feeling definitely take you know a week off two weeks off however long you may need uh, do try to stay active as much as you can because your body is it metabolically adaptable to consume foods without a certain amount of exercise because you've made your body that way. So try and you know, go for walks, uh, maybe go in and do cardio or go out for a run if you can. My suggestion to you to boost up motivation to start going to the gym again is to think about what you really love to do in the gym. Now, this doesn't necessarily have to mean you go in there and you absolutely obliterate your legs every gym or your upper body every gym time. This can mean, you know, if you love training shoulders and you love doing more volume sets, uh, you go in there and you have a nice quick little workout and then you leave. Make them short 30, 45 minute workouts to where you're not dreading to go because it's taking so much energy expenditure and a lot of time out of your day. So try and choose something that you love to do and think about that before prep. So if you, your lifts may change during prep. So you may have been training a certain way to get your body a certain way, but maybe that wasn't necessarily how you loved to train. So think about how you loved to train before your prep. What did you do that you loved before your prep? Think about that and also try and minimize it in terms of duration and then start going to the gym. Maybe it's three times a week, maybe it's four times a week. But try and get in there, get your body moving because that's what's going to help you sort of feel a little bit better since your body has been very used to going to the gym daily. Um, just stopping completely, you're probably not going to feel well. You're probably going to feel you know, pretty crappy if your body's just very stagnant. So definitely get in there and get moving. I know it's hard because you have been burnt out on the gym, but if you can get in there and get moving, I think that your mindset and motivation will change because you will start to feel better and that in and of itself will boost your motivation to start going again. This one is from kdake15. How do you stay consistent managing your time and still making it to the gym? So, I think throughout my life, I started lifting when I was 16 years old, and I've always kind of made it a priority. Um, I've always kind of had in my head, you know, right when I wake up, my plan for the day. That's just how I am personally. I like to kind of plan out my day, and uh, I'll kind of think, okay, I'm going to go 
do this, work on my laptop at this time, I'm gonna go to the grocery store at this time, and I'm gonna go to the gym at this time. So I think having a schedule and keeping that schedule is what's going to keep you consistently going to the gym because once you start to get in a routine, that routine becomes part of your life. And you'll notice if you start to break that routine, it feels a little bit weird. So I think just making a schedule for yourself and making time, you know, this is your your time for the day. And I feel like everyone needs at least a little bit of time throughout their day for themselves. So some people may like to read. Some people may like to go do yoga. Some people may like to paint or whatever the case may be. But to me, the gym time is my me time. So if you think of it that way, putting yourself first at some point in the day, I feel like you will find that motivation to stay on schedule and stay on track and then as it becomes second nature to you you will feel like it's just part of your plan it's just part of your everyday schedule this one's from kara rogue hair sorry if i butchered your last name <laughs> what are your favorite staple meals and do you think you will ever start intuitive eating slash not tracking after you're done competitions my favorite staple meals <laughs> I tend to kind of stick with the same foods every day. I don't know why. That's just how I've always been. Uh, so I do kind of have the same breakfast every day. I have eggs and I'll have some sort of carb. So like a toast or waffle or oatmeal or something like that. Uh, for another meal I really love is jasmine rice and ground turkey. And then something I have every single night is my 0% Faye yogurt. I'll have like six or seven ounces of that with um, some PB2 powder. Well, it's peanut butter powder by Jamie Eason. It's kind of the same thing. I'll have some of that in there. I'll have BioGrow and then I'll add some protein powder in there, my bioactive whey for my Centauri. And I have that every single night with sprinkles on top. It's like something I have to have. I don't know what it is. It's just so good. And I just feel really good after eating it. You know how you have those kind of foods that you stick to? Well, this is definitely one for me. Second question, intuitively eating. So, right now with my lifestyle, um, I do a lot of photo shoots and I do, I do compete. So I have specific goals right now to where I track because it works for me. Uh, so for example, my off season, I would not eat that amount of food on my own. If I was intuitively eating, my hunger cues would be like, you're done eating, quit shoving your face now. But the fact that I'm tracking and it says I have X amount of macros left, I'm like, well shoot, I need to eat more. So sometimes when you have a specific goal, you need to think about what works for you. Um, I know a lot of people do intuitive eat. I don't know of very many people who intuitively eat into a show, uh, but I think for like a modeling gig or anything like that, um, I know Jesse Hilgen brand, she hardly tracks anymore, but she tracked for consistently for years to be able to figure out what portion sizes were good for her body, what macros were great for her body, and how to intuitively cut down for a photo shoot. So right now I'm not at that point with my body. Um, I haven't been tracking for that long. I've only been tracking for about a year. So I'm not to that point yet, but I think I will get there. Um, but I, I see myself tracking up until I'm done with competing. I don't know when that's going to be. I may touch on that in a little bit because I know there's a question about that. But right now, tracking macros works for me and also my hormones get a little jacked up when I compete that's just part of it um, when you compete your hormones get down down regulated a ton um, that's for very many reasons you're very very physically active and you're calorically restricted so you're not your hormones aren't on point and therefore your hunger cues aren't going to be on point. Um, right now, I feel like my hunger cues are fine, but I do track right now because I wanna make sure that I get enough food. And 
I feel like becoming a pro, you really do need to find your little tweaks and macros. So um, some people do better on higher carbs, lower fat. Some people do better on higher fat, lower carbs. Some people do better on maintaining all three macros um, in the same level. So you kind of kind of think what works for you and if intuitively eating works for you that's great but right now my goals are to gain and uh, to build muscle and I I know that I can't do that without tracking because I would probably be done eating by like my fourth meal so that is my answer for intuitive eating the next question as far as making it in the fitness industry um, I feel like I didn't really have that goal of like make it in the fitness industry. I just kind of wanted to help people and to help motivate people and kind of see where that led me. I know that I, I knew that I always wanted to do, you know, some kind of coaching, nutrition coaching and some kind of training hand in hand. I've known that for six years or so. So uh, I decided to take the steps and make social media a bigger part of my life I think about four years ago and I just kind of built from there and I never gave up and I made sure to post great content every single day informative content every single day and uh, it kind of just led me in a certain direction and I think that if you're trying to make it in the fitness industry I would definitely make yourself very educated um, so that you can help others. I would experiment with yourself. I would uh, learn from others um, as far as coaching goes. I do have a four-year degree from Purdue University in dietetics, so I did learn macronutrient metabolism, micronutrient metabolism, anatomy, uh, everything that has to do with the body. <laughs> um, so I I knew that that education would help further my career, and so that's kind of why I chose to major in that. Um, but if you you can definitely succeed in this industry without having a four-year degree, or without having a four-year degree in nutrition. So honestly, um, I do use the education that I have gotten through Purdue. Yes, but I feel like a lot of what I use is through personal experience, through coaching others. Uh, from learning from others and over time that education accumulates and therefore you can kind of help people but you do have to have sort of a scientific background um, in terms of knowing how the body works and all of that. Uh, you don't have to have a degree but educating yourself in that area. Um, I mean I still educate myself every single day so I actually have a, I could talk on this forever. <laughs> I have a video uh, called how I got sponsored a few videos back don't even know when maybe in September is when I filmed it if you want to check that out I kind of tell my story and how I um, got to be where I am today I guess but there's no set way to do it that is just speaking from my experience and what I have done uh, how do you get Flawless skin. Oh my gosh, I do not have flawless skin. I have struggled every year of my life since my teenage years on um, acne. So <laughs> one thing that I've done recently is uh, go to a, an esthetician. She's great. She does facials on me every six weeks. And I also switched up my skincare regimen. So I'm gonna go get those for you guys actually because they have changed my skin. Uh, I usually get breakouts everywhere at all times of my life and this is honestly the first time that my skin has looked absolutely clear so I'm gonna get you guys that. Okay, so what I've been using recently is this face wash. So um, I used to not wash my face right when I woke up. I used to sit down and work for hours, but I do it in the morning and then I go lift. I do it after I lift and then I do it right before bed. So it's kind of a lot, but uh, you'll do this and then you'll do this lytic cleanser focus. Lytic cleanser or like, I don't even know what it is. 
you just like put it on your skin. It's kind of like lotion. You wait for two minutes and then you do this lotion on top. Um, but I don't do the lotion if I am putting on makeup because I kind of just use this CC cream as my lotion and uh, it goes on very well. It doesn't clog my pores. So that's kind of what I've been doing and it has been working very, very, very well. But this one's from Desby Fit One. Love you, Des. How did you find self-love again after your first competition? Did you struggle with body dysmorphia or the reverse diet? So yes, I feel like if this is your first competition season, most people do go through this. Uh, I would say I went through this because I had a coach and she was she's amazing. I love her. But we did that. We did the the meal plan up to my two first shows, and then afterwards we just stopped talking and. I didn't know what a reverse diet was. I didn't know how to properly eat again. Obviously your hunger cues are off, so you're eating a ton more than what your body should be eating. Um, and I can go on a, a whole different topic on post-competition hormones and uh, reverse dieting and gaining body fat back and strength back and everything, but I will leave that to a different video. Uh, but yes, I did go through it because I gained a massive amount of weight that I wasn't used to very rapidly. Um, I feel like when people get very, very lean, they it just messes with their heads. So you may have a six pack, but you feel like you look, you know, fat. And that's something that a lot of people go through. And I'll admit, my first competition, I didn't feel good about my body afterwards. I felt, you know, fluffy or whatever, and that's just kind of what competing does to you because you see your body as such an extremely low body fat percentage, which no, it's not healthy to maintain that year round. And two, you do look amazing and you do feel like you want to keep that, but you can't, it's not realistic. So what I would do, what, what I did was, um, I mean, no one's going to be happy putting on 30 pounds of body fat a month after the show. I mean, come on. No one's going to be happy doing that. Unless you're, you know, very, very, very secure with yourself and you got different goals and you've been in this industry for a while. But for a first time competitor, that's not comfortable. And if you haven't weighed that amount of weight your whole life and then all of a sudden you gain that, that is not comfortable and that you don't feel yourself. So what I would do is I think that emotions come back into play and you start to realize that your body you start to be more happier with your body the more the more times you compete, I guess, because you do have a di you do have different goals throughout the year, and you realize that after you've competed for a little bit. And also, when you get off of a competition, when you start putting carbs back in or foods that you don't normally eat, you're gonna bloat, and your body's not gonna know how to process process those foods for quite some time. So you need to give yourself some time, cut yourself some slack. I mean, you just killed your body for X amount of weeks. So, you know, try and look at your body in a positive light if you can. Um, I know it's very, very hard and it's easier said than done, but I feel like once competitors get past the first two months after a competition, first time competitors, they start to feel like themselves again, they start to process foods again, uh, hormones come back into play, which means that they're feeling normal mentally again. Um, and then they start to see the strength gaining phase come into play. So right after competition, you're going to be weak in the gym. You're not going to be sleeping very well. I mean, it's going to, just because you're done competing doesn't mean you're automatically going to feel better again. It takes several months after, after competition to feel good again. So struggling with body dysmorphia, I think it's just going to come with time. Just give yourself some time, cut yourself some slack, and realize that you are not your body. Your body fat percentage is not who you are as a person. And also, I would try and make some different goals in the gym. So maybe right now you're trying to gain lean mass for your next competition. Um, so try and reverse diet slowly. I mean, not too slow. You don't want to stay very like that lean, um, but you don't want to get 
unnecessarily fat so get a coach that knows what they're doing have them reverse diet you in the proper way um your strength will go up hopefully in about a month after you're competing you will be kind of where you were before competing if you're pushing um and then have some different goals in the gym so maybe focus on your prs in the gym um focus on the fact that you do feel better and you're able to sleep better and you're you're able to spend time with people that you love and you're able to you know have some freedom and flexibility to go out to eat with those people and um, kind of just enjoy life a little bit more rather than being so restrictive and having that six pack because life isn't all about having that amount of shreddiness on your body so I would give yourself some time and um, it will come you will start to feel better and hopefully next time you compete you will realize that this is the process and every different phase of your life is going to have stages where your body fluctuates and that's okay how did you get to be interested in fitness and nutrition uh well my mom and dad they've always been health nuts throughout my whole life so i kind of just learned how to eat healthy through them uh, i was one to bring a snack of almonds when i was in high school i mean who does that when they're in high school <laughs> i just like learned these habits through my parents and then when i saw them compete in 2009 i was a going into junior year of high school i feel like that is when my passion for nutrition and fitness definitely like it, i don't know like watching them compete on stage yeah i saw them go through the process but watching them compete on stage just like lit a fire in me and i was like i'm gonna do that one day and so i feel like that kind of boosted my direction in the nutrition and fitness field sorry guys i keep having to cut the film because my camera's overheating so frustrating <laughs> all right that one was from elsa toff and um so where was i even Mm. Favorite isotory product? That's a hard one. What? Uh, so all isotory products to me are very unique. They taste very different, and the science behind them, um, in terms of ingredients, is really great. So they use a bioactive peptide called BioGrow, and I think that's a very unique. Um, thing to add to a supplement that no other supplement has so my camera is sitting on top of a hypergrow right now it's like staring at me choose me hypergrow is definitely one of my favorite protein powders um it's very thick and the peanut butter chocolate is so good oh my gosh it's it's amazing um it's definitely something i can only incorporate during an off season because it does have added carbs in it um but it is like a bulking type protein powder i think that's really great it tastes so good and then i also think the pre grow max blue raz is definitely my favorite pre-workout out there it doesn't make me jittery it doesn't make my stomach hurt it tastes amazing i get a great pump from it and it's overall to me just a very good good pre-workout because a lot of different ones are too hardcore or too mild or taste like crap <laughs> or make you feel disgusting um but this one is really good and i love it so i don't know what my favorite one is i love all of them that's why i'm a part of their company because i do use their products and i have for almost two years now so i don't know all of them how did you end up working with gymshark this is from lexi Deniki, Deniki, sorry. Um, that's funny actually. In May, I think it was, the head of sponsorship, I think it was Dan, maybe Alfred, I don't know which one. They DM'd me and I got a DM from Gymshark and I like screamed at the top of my lungs and ran around the house because I was so excited because I, being a part of Gymshark, has just been number one to me for a very long time um and they asked me what i felt about gymshark and if i would like to partner up with them and 
they would send me new clothes to see if I liked them and then from there uh, we decided to sign, sign a contract and I became an affiliate with them so I'm not a sponsored athlete but I am sponsored and an affiliate if that makes sense so sponsored athlete basically um, they travel with them and they go to expos with them but their affiliates uh, have the same benefits but without traveling I guess if that makes sense did you and Steve ever break up for a period of time or have you fully been together since high school so I moved to Carmel Indiana from Colorado my senior year of high school and I had a boyfriend at the time from Colorado, but it wasn't working out, the long distance thing. Um, but I did have my eye on Steven the first day I moved here. I was like, he is so cute. So um, all my friends knew I had a crush on him. And then finally, I think February of that year, um, I got his number from my friend Allie. And I texted him and we all went over there one night and hung out and uh, the rest is history. So he asked me out in May of that year and um, I went to Indiana State for my first year of college and he went to Purdue, but we saw each other every weekend and I decided to go to Purdue. So I went there and uh, yeah, that that was that. We've always kind of had a very close relationship. He's like the closest person in every way to me for a very long time. And yes, it's very hard in college to stay with someone that long. I'm going to be the first one to admit it because your friends are most likely all going to be single and your friends are most likely all going to want to go out to the bars all the time and you know meet new guys and this and that and it kind of almost makes you feel like you're missing out in some way so yeah there were times when I was like I just wanted to give up because you know it was hard to stay you know together for so long when you're both so stressed with school and all your friends are in different totally different phases of their lives so it's, it's very hard because you have very outside influential things coming into your relationship but you know at the end of the day you just you gotta if you love that person and you love everything about them and can see yourself being with them then you just you have to stay strong and you have to stick with it because the devil wants to steal, kill, and destroy, and that's exactly what he wants in every relationship. So you can't let those outside influences get to you no matter what. So if you love that person and you can see yourself being with them for the rest of your life, you need to work it out and you need to, you know, there are gonna be hard times. This, there's gonna be hard times, but that's what makes you stronger as a couple. And if you get through that, you can get through anything. So no, we did not break up, <laughs> long story short. Let's see here, do you, ever, do you ever think you'll get worn out of this lifestyle and what are you gonna do after the whole bodybuilding thing? Maya Wagner won. Uh, whole bodybuilding thing. Um, well, I love bodybuilding right now. I think bodybuilding in and of itself is anyone who is trying to is weightlifting or trying to gain lean mass or working out in some way uh, in that manner. So bodybuilding can be without the stage too. It doesn't have to be someone trying to go onto the stage. But in terms of competing, I I don't really know. Um, I feel like. I feel like with competing, your main goal is to get sponsored, um, get noticed maybe, be more, be more involved in this fitness industry. And to me, I feel like I have been fulfilled in those areas. I'm very, very happy with where I'm at. So I just do it for fun. Uh, like I said earlier, I like the way that I can transform my body. Um, I feel very strong mentally and it kind of helps me realize uh, my limits and how to push past them and uh, it does a lot for me mentally more than it does physically. I feel like hopefully I'll become a pro this year. We're working very hard towards that goal and I was you know two points away last year so hopefully this year is my year. We'll see. Uh, after that maybe compete in a few pro shows and see how I do. 
um, and then take it from there. I mean, I don't see myself sustaining this lifestyle for a long time. I will tell you that much. I see myself maybe a few more years um, competing, you know, a couple, three times, maybe four times, pushing it out of the year. But um, I don't know. I don't see myself doing it long term like that, if that makes sense.